Hi, this is Michael from BinaryCafe.com with another Brainy Face Project video. This is episode number five in the HX300 Expert Series. And in this video, we're going to talk about four different modes, the P, A, S, and M modes. And let's start out here and just do an overview because actually showing you how to make the settings, change the settings on the camera, isn't gonna take this long, but it's the understanding of what you're doing. I think that is so important. So this is worth taking about five or six minutes just to talk through this. And then I'm gonna show you how to make the settings and then it's gonna be up to you to have fun with this and just explore all of the different possibilities by going into the PASM modes. P stands for program mode, and A stands for aperture priority mode, S stands for shutter priority mode, and M stands for manual. So you can really go crazy and you can change all of these different settings by going into these different modes. Why would you want to do this? You can go into the camera and just use the intelligent auto mode and the camera is going to look at the lighting situation and make all of the changes for you automatically. And it does a pretty good job, but there may be instances when you want to control things like the amount of time that the shutter is open. For example, you might want to capture a runner or a sports car and just freeze that image so it's not blurry. In that case, you need to change the shutter speed. You may want to, as you're taking pictures of people, actually blur out the background a little bit. So they're in focus, but the background is blurred out. And you can do that by going into the aperture priority mode. You may also want to go out and shoot some landscape photography. This camera does a really good job with its lens of zooming in, and you might find yourself in outdoor situations and you want to have everything in focus the stuff that's close and the stuff that's far away. So when you go into these different modes, you're changing the relationship between some different settings. Understand that what is happening is this lens is focusing light onto a sensor that's inside the camera and that sensor is capturing a digital image that goes onto the memory card. It's really just a powerful computer that you've got in your hand right here and there's a lot of computer processing power that's taking place when you process these images. But there are a few key concepts that I want you to understand when you're using these different modes. And the first is ISO or ISO. You can call it either one. There's an organization that deals with standards and they have a specification that deals with sensitivity of light for digital cameras. They also have one for film, but this digital camera has a sensor and that ISO setting is a value. It's an arbitrary value that allows you to go in and affect the sensitivity of the sensor. Now, if you're in an outdoor situation and there's a lot of light, an ISO setting of 100 or 200 will probably be pretty good but if you're in a dark situation that you might find that there's not enough light you can either turn on the flash or another thing you can do is you can increase your ISO value you can kick it up to 3200 if you want to and what that is doing it's like kind of like turning up the volume on your speakers but with the sensor it's actually changing the sensitivity it's changing the gain so there's more power going to it that allows it to capture more information what happens on a camera like this, which has a relatively small sensor is, as you increase the ISO setting, there's more noise. I'm not talking about audio noise, it's visual noise, that graininess to the picture. And so you might find with higher ISO settings that the picture quality is not as good. So it's important to make sure that if you can, to increase the amount of light or use natural light when available. So that's your ISO setting. Another thing that's important is your aperture setting. And there's a hole that allows you to either have more light or less light come in through the lens and go to the sensor. And that's expressed with an F value. That's your focal length. And that F value can be on the HX300, a value from 2.8 on up to 8.0. And I'm not gonna get very technical on this. What I want you to remember is that if you have a big number, that means that you've got a small hole in the camera here, you've got a smaller opening. So if you've got a value of 8.0, what that means is the hole is smaller. And if you have a small number of 2.8, the hole is bigger, which allows more light to come in. 
Another advantage to having that larger hole is that it allows you to achieve a shallow depth of field. I love that. I love being able to take something and put it into focus and then blur out the background. It's a little bit more difficult to do on a camera that has a smaller sensor, but you certainly can do it. And if you go into the aperture priority mode and you set your F value to 2.8, which you wanna make sure that you're not zoomed in, that's another important thing here, is as you go more, as you zoom in by going to the T portion, the telephoto, you're gonna change that minimum f value you're going to see it rising up as you zoom in and that has to do with the focal length of the camera here lens to the sensor but if you just keep it out here at you know the the basic setting where it's zoomed all the way out not in you're going to be able to do 2.8 blur the background out it's going to look good that's good for portraits and if you're doing landscape photography, a value of 8.0 is good too, uh, because everything that's up close is going to be in focus and everything that's far away is gonna be in focus as well. Uh, shutter mode, this is a mode that allows you to change the amount of time that the sensor or the uh, shutter is actually open. And you can go from one four thousandth of a second all the way to 30 seconds and that's a huge difference when you have the shutter set to fast what that allows you to do is capture things like a runner or a car a race car that's going by and it's going to freeze frame it that's also good if you have enough light it allows you to do things like splash water photography so you can capture a splash because it's happening so quickly on the other end, if you open up the shutter for 30 seconds, this allows you to do uh, nighttime photography. You can do cars on a highway and you can see the blur of their lights. I also have another video which is light painting by using the shutter priority mode. Check that out, I'll put the link down below. And that allows you to put the camera on a tripod and you can move a light source around and you can do pretty cool looking images. A lot of people are more skilled than I am in terms of the, the artistic portion of that but it's pretty basic to be able to do it by going into your shutter priority mode and you can increase your value to 30 seconds. Now I mentioned that you want to put the camera on a tripod for shutter mode. It's also important for a lot of these different modes to put the camera onto a tripod as well. And the reason for that is um, because of all of the different values and everything, you'll find yourself experimenting. And when you move the camera ever so slightly, especially in low light situations, it's going to cause it to blur. You're probably not gonna even see it on the screen. It's a beautiful screen, but it's small. And it's gonna look like it's in focus on your screen. Then you're gonna get it on the computer uh, or blow it up and you're gonna see that it's a little bit blurry. Do yourself a favor, get yourself a tripod. Make sure that when you're changing the settings for program mode, auto uh, or aperture priority mode and shutter priority mode that you put the camera on a tripod and you're gonna get better results. And then the manual mode, this allows you to really go in and tweak all of the different settings as well. But those are the main things that I wanted to tell you about uh, these four different modes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how to do uh, the different settings on the camera. This is really straightforward. Um, the main thing is just have fun with this. This is pretty cool. It's not that complicated. ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor to light. The aperture is the size of the opening. Remember, big number, small hole. And you've got your shutter mode, which allows you to do from one for thousandth of a second on up to 30 seconds and then the manual mode which allows you to go in and tweak all the settings so thanks for watching i'm going to show you how to do this the great thing is if you have a different camera also all this stuff applies as well you've got some other cameras that might actually call it uh, something a little bit different like canon cameras have some different uh, labels for these but the modes are the same um, and then this hx 300 portion i'll show you how to go in and make the changes so thanks for watching bye so the first thing that you want to note is the fact that on the back of the camera there is a jog dial button and this is used if you click on it that is used as a button so you can select options and if you want to you can change parameters by uh, moving that wheel left and right. So I'm just going to put the camera into the P mode right here and when I go into the program mode and turn the camera on Notice that on the screen here, I've got values at the bottom. And I've got my ISO, 
I've got my um, shutter speed, I've got my aperture value, and then also exposure value. And if I want to, what I can do is I can click and use that jog dial as a button. And when I do this, the first time it's gonna make these numbers big. And if I click again, it's gonna move over to the right. And each time I click, it's just gonna keep cycling through from left to right and then start over again. So watch as I click it, the jog dial as a button here. Just click, 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 click. Each time I click, it moves it over. And if I want to right now with that highlighted, I can move this wheel left and right and I can actually change that value now. So I can increase the ISO value or I can go down to a much lower value as well. Remember, low ISO values are good for outdoors, uh, very high light situations. And then if I want to, I can increase the ISO value there. So I have the relationship, I can choose my ISO, I can go in here and I can choose, notice this P icon right now, if I move this it's going to change to a P and a little asterisk and that basically is my program shift mode and that allows me to do both this uh, shutter speed and the aperture and the camera kind of takes care of the relationship between those two values right there and kind of shifts them for you so you can move that around um, and you can choose different values there. And if I want to, I can also go to exposure value and I can decrease the exposure value to get a little bit more darkness. Or if I want to, I can increase the exposure value to uh, get a little bit more uh, brightness in the picture. The next one is the aperture mode and it's the same concept. All I need to do here is once I get into aperture mode, I can just click and use that jog dial as a button. And now in this case, I have the ability to do my ISO setting. It skips over the shutter speed. I can't change that because the camera is going to change that automatically, but then I can choose my uh, F value for my aperture and then I can also do my exposure value as well. If I'm in my aperture mode here and I go in and I choose a very large value, notice that that also darkens the screen, uh, darkens the image there because I'm letting less light in because the, the hole, as you recall, is going to be smaller. And let's go into the shutter mode here. And if I go into the shutter mode, again, I can click and I can choose. Each time I click, I can choose different values. In this mode, I can do the ISO setting. I can change my uh, shutter speed. I cannot change the aperture value here because the camera's gonna take care of that one for me. And then I can also do the exposure value. If you see a little NR on the screen, and what that means is that there's noise reduction being applied. And so you can change the value and try to increase it. Um, and that might get rid of the NR, but NR is the noise reduction mode where the, the computer inside the camera tries to reduce the amount of noise automatically for you. And so you're able to go in and change all the settings there to do your shutter. Um, as you go into this value right here, if you scroll all the way over to the left here, I'm, I'm scrolling to the left. Notice that it goes 30 with the little uh, double ticks right there. That means 30 seconds. So I, I would have my shutter open for 30 seconds right now and I'd absolutely want to make sure that I put the camera on a tripod if I were going to do that because otherwise it's going to be too blurry. And if I click to make that number big and then I wheel all the way over to the right here. It takes a while because I'm going through. These are um, basically fractional parts of a second. So that's like one tenth of a second right there. And as I go all the way over to the right, notice that the shutter is going to be open for a very small amount of time. So the it's actually showing me by making the image on the screen darker that I'm not going to have as much light. And in this case, if I go to one fourth four thousandths of a second. I can't even see the image right there because it's gonna be so dark and it's gonna hold, um, there's just not enough light right there. And if I change that value and I go back, what happens is now with that shutter being open for a longer period of time, it's letting in more light. And then I can also go over here and I can change the exposure value as well. So that's basically it with your PASM mode, select the mode, and then you have the ability to go in and modify the values by using the jog dial. In a future video, I'm gonna show you some of the additional options that are available to you when you go into the program mode, uh, aperture mode, shutter, or priority. But if you wanted to get a little sneak preview, when you go into those modes, if you'd like to, what you can do is you can go into the menu by pressing the menu button on the back of the camera, and then you've got some cool effects. So you've got effects that you can apply to your pictures that you're unable to gain access to via the menu if you're in the intelligent auto mode. 
but when you're in the program mode, you're able to do all sorts of additional cool effects by going into menu. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.